Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to be true. Blackbird fly into the light of the cold dark. Slice me open, not with a knife or a scalpel or anything man-made. Use something organic, a flower, a leaf, your lips. Pull back my flesh, my ribs. Spread me apart. Enter me, all of you. You'll fit. If you don't mind moving some things around, your lips. Bring everything you have that sets you apart from everyone who ever glared at you for getting in their way or who ignored you because you were so quiet. Bring your obstinance, your rage, your philosophy grounded in chaos. Bring your anger. For all those things that happened to you when you were young, and your refusal to forgive yourself for the beatings you received when you opened up to your mother. Bring your clay and colored pencils and a sketchbook, a pens and a notebook. We're similar that way. Memories are never sufficient. Perhaps you still don't understand that this isn't about possessing you or wanting you to be mine. But to know what it is like to be possessed by someone, to have someone living inside not like an embryo with its primordial sense of survival, but by someone who is, was raised by urges and desires, nurtured by fantasies, who knows that she is ravenous and will always give in to her lust, to have those places touched and tasted that no one else has ever reached, that is the desire that singes the vestiges of my reason. So we celebrated our uncertainty by watching shadows waltz across a buckling dance floor to the tune of silverware clattering in the dark skipping out before the waiter brought us our check or our dessert. Thanks. I drink some. Thanks all for being out here and uh, surviving the snow and the drifts and the blizzards and all those sort of things. <laughs> So we did it. We survived another moment, another day, another year. Never much doubt that we would. But still, there's no harm in pausing, taking a breath, looking about, saying, here we are. <clears throat> this moment wasn't guaranteed. So enjoy the consequences. When words tumble out of your mouth, thoughtlessly shaped or phrased, mispronounced, not, not quite expressing the depths of your desire or revulsion, of opening up, of being seen, of swaggering, of being heard, misunderstood, of voicing your thoughts, blurting them out unexpectedly without forethought, that you wish you could suck back in with one gulping inhale but are now out there rattling beliefs and convictions, doing what words do when they've been freed from restraint, let loose, allowed to have their say. This isn't about the future or the afterlife, nor is it about now. That would be too complex. 
This isn't a setup either. It's not about the past. That would require a degree of ingenuity and wit far beyond my reserves. No, it's not about the afterlife. But it may be about death and love, the inevitable and the ultimate, the drip of one onto the other, or the space in between that is vanquished, crystallizes, takes on a formless shape around which we must detour in order to proceed. So relish the tremors and the shivers, the exhilaration of falling in love more times than necessary, often with the wrong person, with those who appropriate, lo appropriate love, use love for devious purposes, are incapable of loving anyone other than themselves, will lie to you and to themselves about love, or falling in love with jubilant people, or the one who may be the right person, the person who savors affection, embraces warmth and tenderness, returns it in kind, or far beyond anything you have ever given or have ever before received, even if only for a short while, a moment which gilds every moment to come. Nothing was there other than title and italics, bold-faced type, followed by a page full of emptiness. Suggesting loneliness, a void, a cipher, neglected, forgotten, abandoned. Perhaps to be spared the fate of so many other pieces of paper, scribbled upon, crumpled up, tossed into the fire, or more likely a waste paper basket. Denied the opportunity to be recycled, to rise up, live again to realize its potential. Thanks. So I, I've been up here several times. I don't think I've ever noticed this guy crawling up on the wall before. It's uh, this sort of gargoyle thing. It is extremely um, Easily distracted, how's <laughs> that? Yeah, yeah, today, yeah. If only the snow dress came up there. I'm always easily distracted. If I had a piece of paper in front of me, I'd, that'd be the worst. So thank you, Philip, for letting me, uh, inviting me to be here or giving in to my, you know, please, I want to be here. Thank you for this cool shirt that I'm wearing. I will not take it off for, until it shreds. And thank you all for being here. Words bare and unadorned, unembellished by musical or visual accompaniment, laid out in print in accordance with the writer's impulses and urges, minding some rules, bending others, expressing the intricacies and subtleties of a convoluted experience, the collision of love and heartbreak, a chilling shriek on sweetly scented night. discomforting awareness of being trapped in one's own nightmare, all in pulsating and penetrating lines. There must be some kind of way out of here, said the joker to the thief. There is too much confusion. I can't get no relief. Businessmen drink my wine. Plowmen dig my earth. None would ever compromise. Nobody of this earth. Surrounded by strangers, arrays of swarming, unrecognized, unknown, snaking between cars, idling in the crosshatch, don't block the box boxes, blocking crosswalks, crab walking between bumpers, wrapping on hoods, looking up, down, swirling in this land of the ambitious, home of the condemned with their thoughts, dreams, ambitions. Will she, won't she, who should call first, how much is it worth? Gotta end this affair, get a new job. Wonder if she's seeing anyone. Look at that line by the coffee cart across the way. 
could go to the one across the street, but that's the best one, the best one, the best one, the best No reason to get excited. The thief kind of calmly spoke. There are many here among us who believe that life is but a joke, but you and I have been through this. This is not our place. Come and let us stop talking softly now. The false and how the hour is getting late. Wait. We're approaching the beginning of time. The start of everything. The Big Bang, God's first proclamation, confusion, ecstasy, mythology. Wave after wave of lust, a thousand varieties of avarice, desire, compassion, apathy. Everything we've learned, everything we've experienced or felt, every insight, opportunity taken and lost matters now, even if we are distracted by the remains of all the abandonments, betrayals, despair, by the voice that calls out from us to silence the shame that we do not truly believe exists. Every encounter, every conversation, dialogue, word, encouragement, scolding, every hand on the gently on someone else's back, or used to slap away another, leaves an imprint that passes through time, guiding, directing, repelling. Through the noise and the static, the dissonance and conflict, emerge our choices that bring us back towards the beginning of time. When we can sit still in the silence allowing our knowledge and fantasies to intermingle, giving ourselves an opportunity to reflect on what we will say if given the opportunity to utter the first words that are ever heard. All along the watchtower, the princess kept her view. The women came and went barefoot servants to outside in the cold distance. Wild cat did growl. Two riders were approaching and the wind began to howl during the last minute. But all that remain are seconds, a fleet of seconds, a flock of seconds. No longer part of a longer segment of time. No longer part of a larger destiny, of a temporal arc. Chaotic seconds, each one existing only for itself. Taken together would not total 60, ticking away one after another, one by one, scattering, absorbed by forever until there remain only one. But still, ample time, sufficient time, abundance of time to resist the inevitable with brazen wonder standing on the moon where talk is cheap and love is true standing on the moon but I would rather be with you somewhere in New York City on our terrace in July looking at that crescent up there in the sky, standing on the moon with nothing left to do. A lovely view of heaven, but I'd rather be with you. Thank you very much. Awesome.